For a number of years now, we have been working on developing techniques for doing small-scale tests inside an electron microscope. There's, there's two main advantages for, for doing inside an electron microscope. Number one, um, if you want to test something really, really small, it's really hard to do it without looking at it. Um, so it helps you to find the sample, position your indenter and all this kind of stuff inside the microscope. And number two is that if you're doing it inside an electron microscope, you can actually see inside the material because you're actually imaging through the material and looking at how the defects interact and how the deformation actually takes place. So this is uh, what's called an a in-situ nano-indenter inside an electron microscope. There's many, many reasons this small-scale testing for nuclear application is important. Um, first is, uh, if you have very small samples, the amount of radioactive materials one has to handle and, and have in his hands is, is much smaller, so it becomes much safer, and the worker who has to work with this material doesn't get exposed uh, to as much radioactive material and radiation uh, as it would be on a larger sample. Now, the other thing is that uh, we will be able, with very small tests, to, to probe on, on specific components of a reactor or reuse older samples as well. So for example in a reactor there is what they call surveillance samples which uh, get pulled out on an annual basis and we make sure that the reactor is still safe and the reactor is still in and the materials still last. Yeah, what's going to happen is that techniques uh, um, making sure that the reactors are safe operating and that the materials are still in good shape even after 40-50 years of operation will become more and more important. And so this is, this is a first of its kind experiment showing how small can you go, what is the limit of size in order to detect uh, mechanical properties, changes due to radiation. But the main challenges are where, you know, how to properly make, handle and do this experiment so you get valuable data out of it. And, um, and it took a couple of attempts. And, and it took several attempts, The yeah. first examples didn't work. Yeah, that's why it took two, two years. Yeah, so it took two You know, we are... Uh, really uh, you know, the forefront uh, um, facility in the world for electron microscopy. We have 10 electron microscopes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you who don't know, electron microscopes you know, are, are bigger than your tabletop microscopes. Um, yeah. And uh, they require a lot of uh, money to purchase one in and to keep them going and a lot of expertise. Uh, and that's what's in-house at NSEM. We have technical staff that run the microscopes and can help users operate them too, uh, if needed. So, you know, it's, it's one of these uh, really unique things about being at Berkeley. I mean, uh, so UC Berkeley campus is, uh, you know, in many ways a normal, normal university. But right up the hill here, we have a national laboratory with huge, huge infrastructure for science. Uh, unique stuff. So this is one of the, the neat things.